You guys are absolutely gonna love this video because NCAA D1, everybody wants to play there, right? This is probably the most common question we get from parents. Oh, my son's goal or my daughter's goal is to play NCAA D1. How do I get there? How do we go about the recruiting process? How does it all work? We're here to answer all your questions. What's going on guys? It's Brayden from Advancement Hockey Advising here. Today we'll be talking everything about the NCAA D1 recruiting process and how to maximize your chances of getting recruited by an NCAA D1 team. Now I know you guys are absolutely gonna love this video because NCAA D1, everybody wants to play there, right? This is probably the most common question we get from parents. Oh, my son's goal or my daughter's goal is to play NCAA D1. How do I get there? How do we go about the recruiting process? How does it all work? It's probably the most common set of questions we get aside from like which junior leagues are the best and the rankings and all that stuff. It's double AD1, I'd say is a close second, if not the number one set of questions that we get. So we're here to answer all your questions. We're here to fulfill all your needs and help you guys figure out how the entire landscape works, how coaches recruit, what the deadlines are, all that kind of stuff. We're here to help you with this video. So hopefully this video brings a lot of value to you. If you think it will, if you like these kind of videos here, absolutely destroy that like button. It goes a long way for the YouTube algorithm to promote it to other parents and players that need to see this type of content. Okay, so take a quick second to do that. It's free. If you're new here as well, and if you like these kind of videos, feel free to absolutely hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you never miss another video moving forward. With that out of the way here, let's dive right into the whole NCAA D1 recruiting process. All right, so to kick off this conversation here, I thought starting with deadlines is probably the best way to start so you can have an idea as to the time frame as to when coaches can start reaching out, when to start considering applying and all that kind of stuff. So the first thing to touch on is the first time coaches can start communicating with either the player player or the parent is January 1st of their 15 year old year. Before that, they cannot reach out directly to the parents and to the players, okay? It's forbidden by the NCAA rules. So it's really important that only after this deadline here that they can start reaching out to you, okay? So don't think because you're 14 and you're not getting D1 interest yet, it's not how it works. You have to wait until your 15 year old year of January 1st, okay? So really important to consider that. There is a loophole around this. The NCAA D1 coaches can reach out to either advisors, the, the kids coach and all that stuff to get a sense of who the kid is they can start watching before this and form an idea okay who their top prospects are and all of this but they just can't start talking to you the player before this but there is like loopholes around this and stuff that's the the first thing the second deadline here that's really important is after that january 1st the august 1st of your 15 year old year that's when coaches can start committing players they won't commit like a whole bunch of players they're really just going to commit the the really elite players that they want to snag from major junior let's say to their program so that those are the players they'll typically go with Afterwards, you know, they'll commit players throughout the years and you know, the, the players in between like 16, 17, 18 year old players, they'll help place them on junior teams in the USHL, NHL, etc. And then for older players, about 10 to 15% of their commits are older guys that are 19 to 20 that, that they really like that are later bloomers that are doing well in their junior league. So typically that's how they go about it. But again, August 1st of their 15 year old year, that's when they can start committing guys. Now I want to make a quick note on Ivy Leagues because they kind of operate a little bit differently. These guys here, they have application deadlines and it's really important that you meet their application deadlines because you won't be able to to apply to the, that school for the following year afterwards now the coaches will guide you through the application deadlines how to apply and all that kind of stuff and they're gonna put you through their the special like route that you need to take to maximize your chances of getting into the Ivy Leagues other schools also have application deadlines not just the Ivy League so that's important to note especially the bigger schools most D1 schools in fact just have application deadlines but overall the Ivy Leagues are a bit earlier and they're they're stricter so they're they're harder to get into what coaches typically make you do is apply to the early decision application so that means if you're applying there and if you get accepted that's the school that you're gonna go to so a coach that really likes you he'll say hey apply early decision and that way it'll be easier to get into and then you'll you'll secure your spot to commit with us okay that's usually how they go about it with the Ivy Leagues typically these deadlines for the Ivy Leagues are November 15th to 17th now that could change in the future it's just the dates that are up there now so really important for each school Ivy Leagues but all the the other schools as well go on the website to look at the specific deadlines right now it's november 15th to 17th but the following year they could change it to the 20th to the 22nd who knows right so really make sure you go on the website to verify and you ask the coach to know exactly what the deadlines are so you know when when you need to submit your applications by in terms of financial aid with ivy leagues with all the other schools as well typically the financial aid deadlines are a little bit after or around the same time as the application deadlines you want to make sure you get your application in 
and you get your financial aid in because that's a big piece as to whether you're going to be able to afford the school or not. Now, if you're on a full ride, you don't have to worry about it, but full rides are few and far between nowadays. And usually coaches divide up an athletic scholarship with an academic scholarship and with a financial aid scholarship. So really important that, that you make sure you apply to financial aid. Also with Ivy Leagues, it's only financial aid. Okay. So really important to be able to afford these Ivy Leagues and not pay 60 to 70 K USD a year. Really important to get that financial aid application in or else I could really hinder your chances of going to that school. So really important to keep that in mind. Overall, that's how the application deadlines work. The financial aid deadlines work for the Ivy Leagues and schools altogether. It's pretty similar. Overall, that's how coaches, you know, that's when they start the recruiting process and when they can start talking to players and committing them as well. Let's move on with how coaches communicate with you. This seems to be the great mystery that a lot of players don't know about. You know, that some players think they need to send an email every week to get coaches to respond to them and communicate with you. Typically, it starts with an email. The really elite players, actually coaches, will reach out to you or your coach. They're going to get in touch with you either by text or just give you a phone call, something like that. But typically for most guys, if you're not a really standout elite player, if you're just a very good player, if you're sending out emails, you're trying to contact these coaches if you have an advisor doing that for you or a coach doing that for you typically they'll respond to the email and they'll say hey like if they're interested they'll say hey let's get in touch what, what's your your information like what's your cell phone number or whatever and then usually if they're really interested in you they'll shoot you a quick text and they'll set up a time to, to give you a shout so you guys can have a conversation uh, about the school what's talked about is basically like they, they tell you a bit about the school they ask you about yourself your grades what's your style of like a uh, player right what, what do you bring to the table they'll ask you a whole bunch of questions and they'll also try and sell their school a little bit just say uh, give you more information about their program and all that stuff and usually these conversations are like 20 minutes to half an hour long and coaches are just trying to get to know you and not sell you too hard on their program but just put their program on the map now it's usually not like the first conversation with d1 coaches is very rarely trying to convince a player to come to their program and to offer them a full ride really it's it's only the elite players that this typically happens but for the good players it's usually just an intro and you feel your way out and from there they watch you and if you see that coaches started texting you a bit more and caught, like wanted to do follow-up conversations with you, if they're inviting you to campus visits, that's when you know, okay, the interest is probably pretty high and they're probably gonna offer a commitment at some point, okay? So when they start messaging you a bit more, inviting you to campus visits, those are two big signs that, okay, this coach is actually probably pretty interested in me. Versus if you're sending a whole bunch of emails, you're not getting much back, only the odd communication here and there, chances are the interest is a little bit lower. So one big thing to keep in mind when it comes to communication with coaches. Coaches. All right, so let's move on to campus visits, how that kind of all works. I get a lot of questions about this uh, from hockey players, like what do I wear? What's it all about? Like what's the point of it? And all this kind of stuff. The big point of it is that if at the NCAA D1 level, if a coach is inviting you to a campus visit, chances are the interest again is very high and they'll probably make you a commitment offer at that point if they like you as a person. Unless if there's a red flag or something and, and they don't like you for whatever reason as a person and all that, then they might just not offer it. But most of the time, usually they're trying to offer for a commitment to you and just show you the campus and convince you to come to their program. They won't be desperate about it because about it they're D1 coaches. They have a lot of good talent coming in. But if they're inviting you, they, they really like you at this point. So what to do, like what, what to wear and all that stuff. I see like dress professionally. You don't need to wear like a suit and tie and all that stuff. That's kind of overkill and you might get some weird looks from people if you do that. But overall, like business casual, you know, look, look nice, look presentable. When you go there, ask some good questions, look engaged, like you're actually interested to be there. Test the walk see if the vibes right if you like the facilities like they're gonna show you the facilities the classes they're gonna show really give you the whole tour of the campus so really it's a great time to ask a lot of questions like to see for yourself if it's the right vibe the right feel for you if you like the rink if you like the classrooms if you like the size of the school all that kind of stuff ask some questions be curious you know don't be annoying and ask questions like every every two seconds and stuff and and, and all that but like really like show curiosity and genuine interest in the program if you look presentable professional you show genuine interest and you're you're humble and you present yourself well coaches will really like that and by the end of it if they have interest in you they're probably gonna offer you at that point if you really present yourself professionally by the end of it if they do offer you a commitment typically like it's a signed contract and the NCAA D1 level that you're gonna commit to that program and get X amount of scholarship money blah 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 all that stuff from there they typically give you a deadline I've seen deadlines um, you know ranging from one week to two weeks to three weeks to a month like it 
really depends on the school. I'd say two weeks a good average. They, they wanna know, right, okay, is this kid in or are they out, basically? So they typically give you a deadline to sign. And from there, you just gotta weigh your options. You have to say, okay, do I have other schools that I'm really interested in? Do I have other campus visits lined up? Pro tip here, if you can, line up your campus visits like really quick if you have multiple offers, uh, just because you don't wanna line them up so far away that you have a deadline and you still have a campus visit afterwards, right? And that it's not the optimal thing. So if you can do like, let's say you have three, like three programs that want you to come visit, try and do them like really quick one at a time within the two week time frame. That way, if they give you a deadline, you're able to see the other campuses and make a more informed decision as to what the best program is for you. But again, coming back to the deadline here, from there, you're gonna weigh your options. You're gonna see, okay, is this actually the fit for me or not? Before you make a decision about anything, always take a bit of time to decide and discuss with your parents. And also, if you can stay over for a night or two with one of the teammates there, and they can bring you out, show you around the campus themselves as well, it's a great time to ask them questions about how they like the program, how they like the, the school, how's the coach, you know, all that kind of stuff, how they like the, the atmosphere of the team, all these types of questions. It's a great time to ask them because the coaches, obviously they're gonna sell you on their program, right? But the, the players are typically pretty honest. They'll sell you a little bit too, but if you ask them like some more questions like that, that you don't typically wanna ask the coach, they'll usually give you their honest opinion as to how the program is. And from there, you can form a general opinion. Okay, like what did I like about this place? What didn't I like? Make a pro and con list of each program uh, that you have options for. And from there, you can come and make a final decision. So guys, that's pretty much it with the entire D1 recruiting process, how it works. At the end of the day, know a few things that, that are really important to remember. D1 coaches will contact you if they're really interested and they'll invite you to campus visits. Once you go on the campus visits, it's really important to present yourself professionally, be engaged, ask a lot of questions to both the coaches and players and get a feel as to what the vibe is, weigh out your different options and then make the decision from there. That's typically how the whole process works and how you want to carry yourself. And that is a wrap for the video, guys. Hopefully you got a ton of value out of this and you have a better understanding as to how the whole D1 process works when it comes to recruiting. If you guys like this video, if you haven't already, absolutely destroy that like button. It goes a long way for other people to see this information. If you're new here as well, and if you like these kind of videos, consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell so you never miss another video moving forward. Also too, if you had any questions for us, any comments whatsoever, drop a comment down below or send us an email at info at ahadvising.com and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. All right, guys, that's it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you on that next one.